another situation in which you do use commas, and this one's a little bit abstract or um, unusual or whatever, is if you have a series of adjectives that are all describing the same noun and they are all equal value. So if I have, uh, going back to Wally and his uh, feast up there, Wally should eat a healthful, comma, balanced diet. What we have here is healthful and balanced. Both describe the noun diet, and they are equal value. They are equally closely related to the word diet. And the way you can tell is you can swap it around, and it still makes sense. I can say Wally should eat a balanced, healthful diet. It makes sense both ways. Since we can change the order, we do use a comma. On the other hand, if we can't change the order and still make sense, those adjectives are different value, unequal value. So if I have Wally drives a big red Ford Power Stroke pickup truck, what we have here are unequal values because pickup is very closely related to the word truck. Power stroke is less closely related and going on and so forth back up to the word big which is the least closely related. And one way you can tell do these things need commas, uh, try switching the order and see what happens. It usually doesn't work well. Uh, while he drives a pickup Ford red power stroke big truck, doesn't make sense. So we know that is not a situation where you put commas. Now, some other situations where you don't use commas. You don't use commas between the subject and the verb of your sentence. So up here, if we go up to this one, we don't say Wally, comma, is rich and cute. There's no comma. The subject and the verb are tightly related to each other in the sentence. So we don't want a comma getting in the way. Uh, likewise, we don't put a comma between the verb and the object. So I would say, I would not say, I like, comma, Wally's dog. Once again, the verb like is too closely related to the object, Wally's dog, so there's no comma in between. Those two things are too tightly related. Other places you don't put commas. You don't put commas after the fanboys. You do put a comma before the fanboys, up here, for example, where you're connecting complete sentences, but you don't put a comma after the fanboys. You also don't put a comma after prepositional phrases, and that includes things like such as. Uh, so I might say, um, Wally has many pets, such as dogs, birds, skunks, and rattlesnakes. So, we have this comma after pets, because all this stuff after it is extra information about the pets. We have these three commas after dogs, birds, and skunks, because we've got a list of three or more items, but you'll see there is no punctuation at all after such as. No comma. Um, some people seem to think, well, there's a list. Don't you put something in front of a list, like a comma or maybe a colon, and the answer is no. If the thing before was a complete sentence, you would use a colon. But this is not a complete sentence. You can't end it with, Wally has many pets such as. That's not a complete sentence, so there's no colon either. So no punctuation at all between these kind of phrases, such as, like, including, those all don't put commas uh, after them. Now, another place that you don't put commas is after dependent words, things like if or while or although, uh, because again, those are too closely related to what comes after them. 
So if I say although Wally is rich, he is crazy, uh, we have this comma because although Wally is rich is an introductory element. But you'll see, oh, and it helps if I spell things correctly, you'll see there is no comma after although. Um, th that's a dependent word. You don't put commas after. Now, this is where people get a little bit confused. Because you see, if you have a sentence like this, it starts with however, however, comma, he does know how to throw a party. So if we have a comma after however, but we don't have a comma after although, how do you tell the difference? The difference is, uh, although, because it's a dependent word, you can't move it and keep the sentence the same. I can't say, Wally although is rich. And I can't really say, Wally is although rich. You can't move it. And this is a kind of a key thing. If you can't change things around, that's a clue that you have to use a comma. And that holds true with some of these other things, like the essential information, uh, the introductory elements. So in this sentence, although is a dependent word. However, on the other hand, is an adverb. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I like to tell you again and again and again how adverbs are really slippery. Adverbs can show up anywhere in the sentence. And so in this sentence, I can move however around. I can say, he does, comma, however, comma, know how to throw a party. Or I can say, he does know how to throw a party, comma, however. Since however can move around, uh, we know it's an adverb, and we know we can set it off with a comma in this particular sentence. Um, it's extra information um, or an introductory element in the case where it's at the beginning of the sentence. So these are some rules when you're tempted to use commas. If you come along to your sentence and you're tempted to use a comma, you want to check with the comma rules. Look at the comma rules. See, do you need a comma here or not? If you can't find one of the comma rules that says you should have a comma, you probably don't need one. So look at that as you're working on your own writing. You don't want to put in commas uh, that change the meaning of the sentence. You want to make sure uh, your sentences are saying what you really want to say.